YouTube family, it's your boy Olu back at it again with a requested video that I think is going to add a lot of value to not only people on the platform, but people looking to check out the platform and see if it's a fit for them. So I'm super excited today to show you guys how you work a direct to seller lead through the pipelines that we've created for you. And we're gonna talk about some of the automations and how it notifies your team and really allows you to stay in front of your prospects. I'm gonna go from prospect stage to leads to acquisitions and just talk about what your main goal is in each pipeline and what the purpose is of it. So I'm super pumped, let's go. So I got a record right here. The way that the system is built, designed and used is once contacts are put in the system, and they can automatically go to these pipelines. We could send it to a workflow to go to these pipelines or some of the bots. If you're using some of the AI systems, they'll push it to pipelines automatically themselves too. So that's pretty cool as well. All right, y'all. So like I was saying, we're going to start off at the very beginning here, just pretending that this is a prospect that's on a cold list or they're on you know, we don't, we're not sure if they're a lead yet, right? So we're gonna put them in the prospects pipeline because we're prospecting these leads, trying to figure out, hey, are they a lead? Do they actually wanna sell their property? Do they wanna sell for something in our range? We gotta figure that stuff out. So we'll just push them right over here to the prospecting pipeline and suspects. And this is where we'll really begin our journey. All right, and you'll see some of the automations it does. I don't even have to fill this in because it's going to start doing this stuff for me automatically. I think I have a property address on this record. Let me make sure I do. We'll just put a test one so you can see some of the stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's a property address here. Great, great, great. Okay. All right. So now when we go to opportunities and prospects, we're going to see, you know, this test record of myself right in there. Okay, great, y'all. So we're here prospecting pipeline. As you can see under suspects, we have myself with the address that's on that record automatically filled in. You guys saw I didn't update the name of this when I put it in. It just the system automatically looks at the record before it puts it in. Remember, I didn't update the property address either. It reads that and throws that in here automatically for us. So that's pretty, makes it simple and straightforward for you. Okay. And then as we move it through the prospecting pipeline, it's going to do a couple of things. So when we move it to follow up, maybe you get on the phone or your VA gets on the phone with this prospect and they talk to them. It's, they're not, they don't say they're not interested in selling, but you know, maybe they say, call me back or for the right price and they don't get enough info. So we'll put them in follow up. This will automatically add them to the follow up campaign so that we can stay in front of this prospect. Okay. And then, uh, or suspect rather, because we're not sure if they're a prospect. Once we ver verify that they're a prospective lead, what do I mean by that? So you're talking to them on the phone. They're saying, yeah, I'd be open to selling. Right. And you know, they're a prospect at this point. You want to figure out, Hey, do they want to sell in our time frame? Right. If they want to sell a year out, yeah, they're a prospect, but they're not quite a lead because you're not going to do anything with that anytime soon, right? Unless there's some huge motivation there and a big problem that you got to help them solve, then push them to the leads, follow up with them for that year, you know, or six months, however long it is, right? But if if they're not at that point, they don't seem that interested in selling, they're like, eh, maybe when, you know, this thing over here happens, we'll, we'll just keep them as a prospect, okay? But once we do verify that they're a lead, we can just push them to this stage in the pi prospecting pipeline. And what it's going to do in a couple of seconds, it's going to automatically take this lead and throw it over into the leads pipeline. OK, and we're going to watch our journey there and talk deep into what happens in that process, too. So just to give you a rundown, the ultimate goal of this prospecting pipeline is to take a list of people that you suspect might want to sell their property, right? Suspect may have a motivation to do a creative deal or a cash deal or sell off market. And we're going to take them and push those people forward and identify the leads. 
if they're not a lead, we're going to get them out the system or follow up. That's it. That's the only goal of this pipeline is to take suspects to leads and send them up to the lead managers to get followed up with. Okay. Okay, y'all. So next up, we're in the leads pipeline. OK, and so remember, we talked about from the prospecting pipeline, once you drop them in that stage, they'll automatically get pushed over here and that they did. We get tags added on them, tags removed, and they come over here into the leads pipeline. OK, and uh, once they drop into the actual new lead stage, they're going to get a text just saying, hey, welcome. You know, we're working on your offer, trying to figure out a great deal for you. And then it's going to keep following up with them until they respond. And the follow up really doesn't stop for like a year. If they never respond, it's going to keep following up with them. Right. So once we identify they're a new lead comes in, gets texted, it also calls your team. So it's going to call the assigned user for this lead once the lead comes in and it's going to tell them, hey, press a button to connect to the seller. This is to allow you to increase your speed to leads. So you're getting to your leads like that. All right, fast. And then it, like I said, it just follows up forever and ever. Okay. Hey, you looking to sell? Hey, did you get my message? Question mark, first name, question mark, things like that. It just keeps going. So once we, let me back up a little bit. The goal of the leads pipeline is to take prospects that you've now identified as leads. They want to sell their property. They want to sell in your timeline. They're not asking you know, an insane price. They're not asking like 10 times the, the value of the house, right? We know they're elite. So now our goal is to qualify them even more. All right, we're going to qualify. Hey, yeah, they may want to sell their property. They may want to sell it in our timeline. They may want to sell for a decent price, but are they an actual good fit to do a deal with? Is the value there? Is the volume there in their market, right? Is this property in the middle of nowhere? Do we have buyers? What kind of condition is are, are there foundation issues? We got to find these things out. And the goal of this is to get it over to the acquisitions team. You may not have an acquisitions team yet. That may just be you as well or your partner. But it's important to delineate between who is like wants to sell and who's like ready to go. Right. Who's ready to sign a contract and become a profitable deal for our company, whether we're wholesaling it, keeping it, doing some creative, wrapping it, whatever it is. OK, the. So the main thing you're trying to do when you're in this pipeline or that your team is doing is just working these leads, following up with them, nurturing them, qualifying them, setting appointments for your acquisitions team to come on and close them and lock them up. OK, so that's that's what this the goal of this is. OK, so when they get here, they get a text message. We'll move them to nurture leads. This is where you put leads when you're like following up with them. Maybe they have some more information they need to get. Maybe there's another decision maker you need to get on the phone, but they're definitely motivated. Those kind of things. We got to nurture them a little bit more before we, you know, get them all the way there. OK. And as I'm moving these through here, I'm trying not to spend a, a ton of time, you know, clicking in and out. But it's it's adding tags. It's removing tags. It's updating the lead. If you put the assignment fee that you're expecting to get here, it's going to show that up in your dashboard so you can track your your open deals, your closed deals, so you can really get an idea of your cash conversion cycle and how much you know revenue your business is generating, your ROAS, all of that stuff. Okay. When we move them to qualification, it's gonna um, send your team another notification saying, "Hey, qualify this lead some more. We got to get to the bottom of this. Is this truly a lead that we should send up to acquisitions to get locked up? Right? Do we start?" you know, negotiating. We're still kind of in the discovery phase right now. OK. And just to highlight, so this one sends text messages, emails to the seller. This one, when there's an appointment set, of course, we want to notify them the appointment is confirmed, reminders for the appointment that also sends text to the sellers. This one and this one do not send any text to the sellers as well as qualification. That one doesn't send any text to the sellers either. It's just to notify your team, assign them tasks and to update the actual contact record and tags on there. OK, then we'll move it to appointment set. You know, of course, we would have gone into the contact and actually set an appointment. 
and they would start getting reminders, confirmations, the assigned team member, same for them. And then when we're ready, when we determine, hey, this lead is qualified, they're ready to go, they're gonna do a deal with someone in the next couple of weeks, month, two months, three months. Let's push this forward, see if we can make something happen. We're gonna drop it to this stage, acquisitions, ready for offer. And when we drop it in this stage right here of the leads pipeline, it actually automatically pushes it over to the acquisitions pipeline for us. So now if I go to acquisitions, All right, y'all. So when we come over to the acquisitions pipeline, you'll want to give it probably about three minutes for the lead to get pushed over a wait step there. And when it actually loads, you're, you'll see it has this the same address info, everything we need on here, the source. You don't have to update that stuff. It does it for you and it automatically adds new tags and removes old one on here so that we can keep track of our leads. Right. And so the goal of the acquisitions pipeline is really just to get it to contract. That's the only goal, right? You're trying to weed out the people by de-escalating them who aren't accepting your offers and whatnot, and you're trying to get it to contract. And so when you're moving it through each of these stages, when you move it to due diligence, it automatically creates a record in the due diligence pipeline for your underwriting team to go review the deal, and it assigns them tasks to go check it out, all of that great stuff. When you move it to ready for offer, it also lets your team know, hey, go make an offer on this ASAP. We got to go make an offer to the seller. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. All right. And just makes it super easy for you to track. Hey, where are these leads at? Did we did we hit every step during the acquisitions process for these? All right. After you, you know, make an offer, you can move them here to offer made LOI sent. You can use the bulk offer generator, the single offer generator, the LOI sender that we have in here that sends cash and creative offers um, to make sure you're getting that out. You move it to here if you are got to go through some negotiation, which happens most of the time with the seller the, and um, whoever else they're working with on the deal, whatever other decision makers are there. So we'll leave it there and you know it notifies the team to negotiate with that person and to make sure they're staying on top of them. And it automatically assigns tasks and all of that great stuff right on the on the contact record if we click in there a lot of this is is basically to keep your team on point it's to keep you in front of the seller and keep the seller in front of you so you know who's in your pipeline so you're managing it well right and so if an offer is rejected we can move it right here again it's going to notify your team assign tasks send them emails and let them know hey we got a seller right here that's off rejecting the offer um, it also keeps you in mind to make sure you're going back to see what you can do to try to get that up um, or de-escalate the lead back to the leads pipeline. So when you put a lead here in this stage, it's going to send them back to the leads pipeline because, hey, they're not ready for acquisitions yet. They're not ready to, for a verbal agreement. They're not ready to get paperwork sent to them. They're not going to sign, right? They're not ready just yet. We're going to de-escalate them. They slipped through the cracks or something changed, okay? When we actually move it to this paperwork sent stage, the contact, the seller, they're going to get a contract. OK, but there's a couple of things we need to make sure are in their contact record before we push them to that stage, because if we don't have those, then they're going to get the paperwork, but it's going to have values missing. And it looks just like this. They're going to get an email. It's going to have, you know, some information, a link to it. They'll get a text with the same thing, just like this. And what you'll want to actually make sure is on their contact record is a couple of things. Their full name spelled properly, first and last. Their email, their phone number, obviously. And then we'll want to scroll down a little bit. I'm just going to go through everything so you can see it. We'll want to make sure that their property address is here, city, state, zip. When you update these, it automatically updates the full address field. Uh, we'll also want to make sure that we have a couple of other fields filled out under property value. There are a couple of fields that we can use, and this is also where the cash offer cre creator is at, but there's a, a couple of fields we can use here under property value for, you know, the cash purchase price, things like that. You know, if you want to use that number, 
that's actually what fills into the contract to this cash purchase price. So you'll want to make sure that's actually filled out creative details. So any extra details that you want to keep in mind for the creative deal, you can put those there. That's not necessary. I'm just saying that's an extra thing you can do. The necessary thing is going to be the cash purchase price and their name, their email, their phone, the inspection period, the closing period, any additional terms. Like if you want to vacant at closing, you want to put that here, the closing date. Okay. So the difference between this and this, obviously this is like a period. So 30 days, 45 days, this is like a date. So 30 days after X or specific 12, 6, 24 or whatever you want it to be. And if you got a creative deal, you'll want to make sure these creative ones are filled out. All the creative details and the cash details are both auto filled out by the calculators in the system, but you can fill them out manually too if you want to manually change the numbers in the contract. You also will want to make sure you put the EMD. This is also something that's auto calculated. I'm just showing you so that when you're looking at something and you're trying to go through before you send out the contract or push that contact to that stage in the acquisitions pipeline, you know what to go look for and make sure it's there. All right. So we got all the stuff we need here. So we're good. So this person can be pushed to paperwork sent as they were, were um, because they're ready. They got all the fields filled out. Cool. So next, once we're done with paperwork sent, your seller hopefully signs a contract. Once they do sign the contract, they'll get emailed a copy of it and they'll be in the paperwork sign stage. Once we push them to the paperwork sign stage, they're going to get marked as one. It's going to go green. So we'll want to make sure that we have our estimated assignment fee here under the unity value because that is going to go directly into our pipeline and let us know, hey, you know, acquisitions just want some money. Dispo, you guys got to push it through. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. So that's pretty cool. Again, there's another wait, wait step there. And as you can see, it already kicked it out of this pipeline and marked it as one. If I hit filters and change my statuses to all or just delete this filter. So it's just showing all statuses. You'll see here it's one. OK, and so now when I go over to the dispositions and transactions pipeline that's what's up next all right selling the deal to your buyers dispo and coordinating the transaction with the title company transactions cool so this does not send any automated text to the seller this is purely for your dispo team and your partners for and your vas all of those people that you're working with to be able to manage the deal getting in front of as many eyes as possible so you can sell it asap each one of these steps are going to happen, most of them probably about a day apart, some of them on the same day, right? So when a new deal comes in, you should get the deal page created the same day. You just have to go over to sites, funnels, new deal funnel that's already in there in your system and clone it for each deal you get. And then you can move it to deal created. All right. Then you're going to send it to your pocket buyers, your all stars. You'll move it right there. After you send out the full email blast to your full list you'll move it to email one. Sorry, I'm moving it a little fast. Usually you're not going to be moving leads through the pipeline this fast. So it's just updating and then refreshing. Um, but then you'll want to move it to email. And then after you send your text blast to your whole list, so you'll send it to your all star buyers, your pocket buyers first, then maybe the next day or yeah, definitely the next day. I would give them at least a little bit of time. The next day at the latest, if you wanted to do it a couple hours later, put some pressure on them. That's fine too. But you're going to email your whole list, not just pocket buyers. You're going to text your whole list, not just pocket buyers. And then you're going to want to start reaching out to agents and JV partners. So I'm not going to lie. This is one of the first things we do too. Honestly, we try to hit up a lot of these in the same day, but we'll call the sold properties that look like flips. If that's what we're working on first, because your comps are your buyers. And a lot of times those agents work directly with the buyer and can tell you right away if they know someone that'll want it. So that makes it easy. And then you got the active outreach. That's when you're like following up with your leads, you're hitting the phones, you're pulling lists, you're calling everybody trying to get this sold. All right. And at that point, if you still haven't get it sold, you're like four, five, six days into the process, you need to go back and renegotiate. And this will assign a task to the 
to your team to go back and renegotiate the deal so everyone knows, hey, this is top priority right now. You got the second email to your whole list, second text blast to your whole list, and then what we're all looking for, assigned a buyer. And uh, it's great when that happens. So that is for the dispo and then for the TC. I love this pipeline because when I was first starting out, one of the biggest issues I had is after we locked up a deal, I realized sellers need a lot more love than we think we do. I was thinking, hey, if I call them once a week, they'll be good. No, most of them, a lot of them, they want to be called sometimes every other day. Some sellers want to talk to you every day. Uh, so it's just good to have something in there that automates that process. So same once you lock the deal up in acquisitions, it sends it to the transaction pipeline. And as you move it through each of these stages, it's going to send a text to the seller just to make your whole life easier with the TC. So once escrow tells you, hey, it's open, you move it here, that seller is literally going to get a text saying, hey, escrow is opened. Great. You move it to set inspection date, the seller is going to get a text saying, hey, we need to set a date for the inspection, yada, yada, yada. And uh, it's going to try to get them to send us the preferred time. Like it's going to ask them for a preferred time. So you don't have to like manually go in and type that. You just move it or your TC just moves it to the pipeline stage. Once it's started, the inspection period, once you guys get access, hopefully that's when you're starting your inspection. It's going to send them a text then. Same for lean search. Same when the buyer is assigned. It doesn't actually tell them, hey, we assigned a buyer. It just says, hey, we're getting super close to getting this deal close. I'm pumped. Um, these ones send notifications to your team to go and get that information from the buyer, uh, awaiting buyer seller docs. If we're, if we're at that step, it's going to tell them, Hey, we need some title, needs some docs from you. Please respond to them or give us a call. If you have a question, these two, basically this one says, Hey, we got the clear to close. Hooray. Yeah. 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 This one says, congrats. Woo, woo. Psh, psh, psh. We sold, we sold, you sold, you sold, you sold. So just sends them a party message and we can even trigger that to ask them for a review if we want. So that's pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. Except this on hold stage, if you have like a loan mod, short sale, uh, something that's holding up the deal, um, probate, something that's holding up the deal where it's like it's on hold. Right. So you don't necessarily want it to just sit in one of these stages. You got to wait. You got to know you got to follow up. So and then if you ever wanted to add a follow-up onto a lead, you can refer back to our launching campaigns video in the intro video, but there's really only a couple of types of campaigns for each of these. There's the reactivation campaign for leads that already existed. There's the follow-up campaign. There's the cold follow-up campaign for really cold leads that need a follow-up or people you never talked to that need a follow-up. And there's the get response workflow. That's it. And the reactivation and follow-up campaigns are available for buyers, sellers, and agents. Okay. And so, yeah, y'all, that's, that's pretty much the system and how it works. This is how we're automating our business. This is how the pipelines work. This is what's making it easy for us to be able to track stuff. And if you're someone who's getting um, introduced to Ari Unlock or already a present user. This is the flow and this is the purpose of each pipeline, each stage, and um, some of the notifications that goes out. It's to keep your team on point so they're not missing a beat, not missing a step. And then whenever you want, you just go, you just go and you know assign them to whichever follow up campaign they might need. So let me know, guys, if you all have any questions about this. This has been an in-depth review of the process for a direct to seller lead. I'm going to do one of these videos as well for when you're prospecting for buyers, uh, sending out a buyer's, you know, blast to your, to your uh, buyers list. I'm going to be doing one of these videos as well for agents too. So yeah, let me know what other questions you have. Please like comment and subscribe and tell me what other content you'd love to see. Peace.